Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and today I'm very excited uh, because I am going to share with you my picks for 2022 off of the thousand and one books you must read before you die list. Uh, but first, before I kind of go into that, I just want to say a really big thank you to everyone who has done my thousand and one books tag. I um, just am so incredibly appreciative of everyone who's taken the time to film a video and to tag other people. It absolutely means the world to me and in that tag I had asked about the thousand and one book club and got such a positive response so I definitely will be doing a book club in 2022 where I will be selecting 10 books not 12 and the first month of the book club won't be until February to give people time to actually get the books uh, I'm not sharing which of these um, which of the books are on the book club today but all 10 will be selected from this list and so or from from these books that I'm going to show you. Uh, so if there's a book in this list or a book in here that you really, really would love to read uh, or would love to see as be part of the book club, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, and in a couple of weeks, I'll do my announcement video with the 10 books. The reason why I'm doing 10 is because there's one month I know I'm on vacation and I don't read a lot in August, so I'm not going to try and do a book in that month. And then I'm not doing one in January to give people time to actually get the books. All right, but again, thank you so much to everyone who just offered me great support and great advice and uh, said, yes, absolutely go for it. So um, I'm very, very thankful for everyone who uh, commented and just uh, really helped me decide that. So thank you so much. But for the books, um, at, for next year, for 2022, what I do at the start of every year is I select 52 books. I select 52 with the idea that maybe one per week, um, even though I read hopefully more than that off of the list in the year. Uh, Hopefully I read more than that off the list in the year. Uh, but the minimum, I guess, that I would like to try and read are the 52. If you've watched my countdown videos, I always have two numbers. Uh, these are the books that will qualify for the 2022 total, which will flip to 52 after the first of the year. Um, and so, yeah, these are the books that will qualify for that. And I 52 is quite a bit, and I'm already two and a half minutes in, so we're going to jump into those books. If I know of why I picked it, why I bought it, I will let you know as I go through the books. If I already have something planned, like a buddy read, I will try and mention it um, and just work my way through the books. <laughs> so the first book is Blood and Guts in High School by Kathy Acker. I do have one fun story. I won't go into this much detail for all these books. I bought this off of Thrift Books and they sent me this instead. Uh, these are definitely not the same book. I really hope someone who didn't buy this book um, get, got this one instead because this one is probably not age appropriate for someone who might enjoy this book. Yeah, but Blood and Guts in High School is the first one and it's also the first one in the alphabet by author last name, which is why I ended up also picking it this month or for next year. Book Next book, The Robber Bride by Margaret Atwood. Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This is the last of her main six novels that I have left to read and the last Austen that is on the Thousand One book list. So uh, Mansfield Park. And then I have Happy by Nicola Barker. And the reason why this one is, is in Goodreads, it's the one with the latest publication date. I'm not sure how true that is, but it is that that is why it got added to the list. I have ordered it, but don't have it yet. And then I have Regeneration by Pat Barker, which got added to the list because I'm hoping to do a buddy read with Margaret Pennard. And then we have The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I saw this on booktube and really was had uh, saw a lot of good things about this particular book, which is why I ended up buying this one. And then I have Wild Swans by Jung Chang, which I got last year for the Asian Readathon and didn't read. Life and Times of Michael K by J.M. Coetzee. The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. My son got me this for my birthday, which is why I have it. 
The Brothers Karamazov, uh, this by Dostoevsky. This is one of the Mux and Greitz bucket list winners uh, from all the voting that everyone did. So I'm looking forward to this one. The Red Queen by Margaret Drabble. The Circle by Dave Eggers. This my son got me for my birthday as well. Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I believe I got this for Victober, and then of course didn't have time to read it. I have Neuromancer by William Gibson because someone by the name of David Wiley had said he would read it with me if it ended up on my list. So David, we will hopefully be doing a buddy read of Neuromancer by William Gibson. Then we have Blindness by Henry Green. Far From the Maddening Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. What I Love by Siri Hustved. I'm not sure if that's how you say the last name, but this is going to be a buddy read with Alice from Alice in the Giant Bookshelf in March. Then I have An Artist in the Floating World by Kazuo Ishiguro. I'm butchering that name, which I'm hoping will be a buddy read with Larry Has Opinions. And I have uh, Zorba the Greek, which uh, is the last one in the alphabet by title, which is why it got added this year. On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Passing by Nella Larson. The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. 1004 by Ben Lerner. It's the first in the alphabet by title in the list. If This Is a Man, The Truce by Primo Levi. This is the highest rated book that I could find on the list. At the Mountain of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft. H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald, Midak Alley, and Miramar. These are for the Reading Africa Challenge, which is hosted by Mark over at Book Time with Elvis. I drew Egypt, and these are both set in Egypt, so those will be great. Then I have The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann, because I'm hoping Greg at another Bibliophile Reads hosts a read-along of The Magic Mountain, because I believe he had mentioned it, but so I have that book coming. And then I have um, Tirant Le Blanc, which is the oldest book on the list that I could find easily. And then I have Moby Dick by Herman Melville. This was a gift from Shelley Swearingen, which is how it ended up on my list this year. And then I have The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. This is the book I'm regretting buying and having on my shelf because I had to put it on my list. The Sea, the Sea by Iris Murdoch. Cataract, um, which is the book with the fewest number of reviews on Goodreads, which is how it got added to the list. Then we have The Manners of Uloa, or, and this is actually called The House of Uloa. Uh, and this book got added because it said it had the fewest number of pages, which was obviously a Goodreads mistake, uh, but I'm keeping it anyway because that was the intent as to why I added it. And then I have Home by Marilyn Robinson. I read Gilead this year, which is why I ended up picking up Home. Call It Sleep by Henry Roth, because I'm hoping to do a buddy read with Courtney Ferreter this year for that book. Woman at Point Zero, Nawal El Sadawi. Uh, this is also for the Reading Africa Challenge. Uh, it is set, I believe, in Cairo, so it's perfect for the Egypt one. Murder Must Advertise by Dorothy L. Sayers. A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth, which is the longest book on the list this year. The Autobiography of Alice B. Toklas by Gertrude Stein. The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. This got added because it had the most number of reviews on Goodreads. Walden by Henry D. Thoreau. 
War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. This is the second book that won in the Mooks and Grimes bucket list uh, voting that I had. And I'm excited to be able to read this one this year. Uh, I, You can see now I have a paperback copy here. Uh, be, uh, my beautiful copy that I have from Barnes & Noble did not have a translator on it and I wasn't sure I wanted to read it in the hardback. So of course I ended up getting this copy. Uh, but War and Peace by Leo Leo Tolstoy will be read in 2022. And then Kristen Lavrandot, La, oh my goodness, Kristen Lavrand's Datter by Sigrid Unset. Uh, I saw this one on I believe a list by Steve Donahue, which is why I ended up picking it up, not realizing it was this big. But this one is another chunky book on the list for this year. The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. This was also a gift by Shelley Swearingen, uh, which is how it ended up on the list this year. And then we have The Once and Future King by T.H. White. And the last book is chess story by Stefan Zweig. Zweig. I'm not sure if that's how you say his last name. This is on the list because it is the last author um, in the alphabet, Zweig. So that's why this one got added. But I have to tell you, I'm thrilled that this was added because look at how small this is. This is 82 pages. This is the shortest book on the list. So I am ecstatic that this one is on the list. Um, but it's the 52 that made it onto the list that will be the 20, official 2022 list. Uh, there are some other books that I certainly own that didn't end up on the list. Like I said, I had to maneuver a little bit and pare it down a little bit because it was way too many books over a thousand. Uh, I have now the full Penguin qu Classics of 1001 Arabian Nights, which was a recommendation by Steve Donahue uh, as far as which edition to read. And I also have The Man Without Qualities by Robert Moosley, and I couldn't put that one on there. That one was lo longer than these books as well. Uh, so, and then I have the first in the Marcel Proust Remembrance for Lost Remembrance of Things Past, I think is what it's called. And uh, I had to I couldn't, there's just no way I would be able to read all of that in uh, 2022. Hopefully I can start to read some of those, but I don't know how many I'll make it through. Uh, but as I said, if there's any books in here that I, of the ones I just went through that you would love to have as part of the book club, please let me know. Um, I will be announcing the official book club picks probably uh, maybe the last week of the year. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I think the last week of the year is when I'll do it uh, with the idea, like I said, that it will be starting in February. Uh, so it gives people time to go and get the books and hopefully be able to be part of the book club. As, uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. Just those, just those 52 <laughs> books. I'm actually, I am incredibly excited by all of the picks that I ended up with this year. I think reading these 52 books uh, where I don't own them all, but I do own several of them uh, is fantastic. I can't wait to read these. Uh, some of these are super intimidating and some of these just seem really, really fun. I can't wait to read like Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, and uh, yeah, it should be a really good, and my first Dorothy L. Sayers. So yeah, there's a lot of really fun ones. And then there's, you know, a few really intimidating ones on this list. But uh, I'm very, very, very ecstatic that this is the list. <laughs> and um, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks. Bye.